all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show so the discussion today is about neurogenesis neurogenesis is the birth of new neurons in our brain generally it was supposed that our brain has neurons that are final and there are no more neurons that are produced however this also is a science that has been going on since i believe 1917s 70s and above that the neurogenesis or production of new neurons have been seen in um, uh, rodents and other animals by this time in humans there are now many studies that say that neurogenesis occurs or production of new neurons some studies say that neurogenesis does not occur so clinically those studies that are based on promoting neurogenesis they have very good positive outcomes as well and there are studies that actually show that neurogenesis occurs in humans too so interesting to know this because we are in the middle of a pandemic of neurological outcomes as well as part of covid and those neurological outcomes are not just because of the long covid but they are also because of vaccine injuries too as rare as they may be as few as they may be but when they are present they are debilitating and sometimes even people commit suicides so i thought this was important for us to understand number 1 where are the neurons that are generated new in our brain and number 2 what are the lifestyle changes that we can make to allow and promote neurogenesis so one symptom to keep in mind is depression depression one cause of depression is if the neurogenesis in hippocampus hippocampus is a structure in the brain we'll discuss that today if the hippocampal neurogenesis is disrupted we show the result of that with depression and many times when we restore hippocampal neurogenesis or new neuron production our depression goes away as well or reduces as well and they have seen that many anti anxiety drugs or many anti depressants actually promote neurogenesis in hippocampal area so this is the basic summary of it all let's look at the pathology the background and then what are the things that we can do to promote neurogenesis so starting with the references this is drbean.com if you like these talks uh, there is a link in the description for drbean.com plan one time payment of $67 the cheapest ever you would get and you would have access to 900 lectures on dr bean and access to any new lectures that are published we pu- we weekly publish at least one new lecture so you would have access to that without further payments then here is an article beyond the hippocampus and the uh, this is subventricular zone in hippocampus adult neurogenesis throughout the brain so there is a structure here and i'll discuss more hippocampus and then subventricular zone and then in this study here they talk about even more areas for example hypothalamus remember hypothalamus is the main controller of our hormonal system and hypothalamus itself controls neurogenesis in the hippocampus and i know that i have not yet described what hippocampus is i'll do that but remember hypothalamus is a structure that itself has new neurons produced and it also regulates neuron production in other parts then if we continue on so this is hippocampus then this is the then olfactory bulb nose nasal uh, sorry not nose the fragrance related neurological neurons in the olfactory bulb they are renewed as well which is very important regulation of the so then if we continue on here is hypothalamus then 
in metabolic, so hypothalamus and metabolic functions, then you would see that um, ascending reticular activating system, the role of hypothalamus here in sexual and mating behaviors, and so on. So there are many parts. Look at this striatal neurogenesis. So there are many parts in our brain which have neurogenesis going on in them. So our brain has plasticity. That is, it can continue to mold and grow and adapt. And one reason for that is production of new neurons. And also please remember that when there, is, there are production of new neuron, that also means there are death of the older neurons. And if we have the death of the older neurons, but new neurons are not being produced, then we have a problem. So this really, today's talk, imagine replacement of the neurons. Then there are some more links over here. This is a very good TED talk by Dr. Sandrine Thure. She has done a lot of research on this. Then there are a lots of other studies as well. I've taken some parts of these studies to discuss them as part of the discussion today. So I'm gonna now leave all these references alone. Actually, I'm gonna close them and now go to our drawn discussion. So sex actually also increases neurogenesis. And you would see that anything, any event which causes less stress, which causes pleasure, entertainment, novelty, uniqueness, happiness, that will cause promotion of neurogenesis. And any stressful events in our brain or in our life's activities are negatively impactful for neurogenesis. So these are the gifts for humanity that are continuing. So here, let's start with the hippocampus. Hippocampus, so if you can look at uh, my where I'm pointing, deep in the temporal, so this part of the brain, there are segments that are called temporal lobes. Deep in the temporal lobe, a part of the limbic system, limbic system is our primitive brain. That part of the brain is responsible for our emotional and survival behavior. So it is connected with olfaction. It is connected with thirst. It is connected with hunger. It is connected with sex. It is connected with emotions. It is connected with mood. It is connected with behavior. All of those, it is connected with pattern recognition. We are pattern recognition machines. So there are so many things that the limbic system does. And the, the intent of the limbic system is to protect us. So it works for our survival, plus to promote our species. So that is what is the function of it. Hippocampus is a very important part of this limbic system. It is Hippocampus is in turn connected with almost all the brain with various circuits. And hippocampus has a hugely important job, and that is memory, encoding of the memory, forming of the memory, connecting of the current events to previous and future possibilities, thinking about future, thinking about past, connecting all of that together is hippocampus's function. Imagine for a second that hippocampal function goes away. The whole brain circuitry will become less functional and the brain would start degenerating. So there would be a cognitive decline first. The person would start saying, I cannot remember things. I cannot understand things. I cannot process things. I cannot process images. I cannot process patterns. I cannot recognize things. I cannot orient myself in space. They would call most of these things as I have brain fog. And then if it continues, then the decline would appear. So with this, let's see here. Hippocampus is part of the limbic system. It is embedded deep in the temporal lobe. Here, this little red thing over here is the hippocampus. It is concerned with learning and memory in the bigger functions. It is a plastic, meaning changeable, and very vulnerable structure. Because it is plastic, plastic meaning it can change, that means it is vulnerable as well because if the change does not occur correctly, if the new neurons do not are not born correctly, if they're not integrated 
correctly, if they're not connected correctly, we have a problem. Because of that, it is very vulnerable. For example, chemotherapy, what is the role of chemotherapy in the cancers, for example, is to reduce the number of new cell production. Because we're trying to defeat the cancer by reducing the number of cell productions or reducing the cell productions. Now, the cells that are being produced in the brain, when chemo stops them as well, then the hippocampal function is disrupted. And the first sign of that is depression. So chemo and depression, one of the reasons for that depression, other than the social aspects and the, uh, the uh, threat to the life and all that, one of the reasons for the depression is lack of new neurons being formed because chemo has stopped them in the brain. And then the question would become, well, fine, during the chemo, that is the one part of the depression. What happens that even after the chemo, there is depression? That is because the once the neurogenesis is disrupted, it does not get back on track the day you stop chemo. So imagine if somebody was on chemo for 15 days, and now they were not producing new neurons. There are 700 new neurons being produced in, in hippocampus every day. Imagine they are not being produced. 15 days later, you stop chemo or somebody stops chemo. Those all 700 per day neurons would not be produced in one day. It would actually take some time for the stem cells in the temporal lobe, in the dentate gyrus, in the hippocampus to restore their function and start working. And if you say, hey, uh, 700 or this is a small number per day, think about it this way that by 50 years of our age, majority of the hippocampus has been replaced by new neurons. And the second important thing that to think about, it's not just the number of neurons being produced. These neurons are being produced to recognize new events, to store them, to memorize them, to organize them. They are a result of newer activities and our way to store them. We deprecate the older ones that may have carrying the memory, let's say from 50 years ago, and we bring in the new ones, give them the new memories and connect them into the system. These are like tiny USB drives we are installing every day. So it's not about the number, it's about their presence is necessary for newer events and memory and in turn for the health of the brain and mood and function. Then, hippocampus is also, I'll go to this part in a second, it is also related to emotional responses. As you can see, I'm a little emotional when I'm discussing this because it is a very important thing and I wish everyone knows this because there are just some lifestyle changes that would help their brain be healthy. And this is also why I started that art channel which, by the way, has less presence. But art channel, you would see here as well that we'll talk about art. Anything that would make the brain exercise more in a pleasant way would make the brain healthy more as well. So emotional responses and then organization of responses. Also done in hippocampus or hippocampus is a part of it. The whole thing, the brain works together. Then recollection of the past experiences. Then imagination of the future is part of the hippocampus function as well. Imagine if the hippocampus is not reborn correctly or not doesn't have neurogenesis correctly. We cannot recollect past. We cannot imagine future correctly. Brain fog. Hippocampus is related to spatial navigation. So when you are operating within your own room or in the car, in the world, and you are spatially aware, right now when my I am moving my hands and arms and I know that this mic is over here and I should not hit it while I'm, I'm teaching, that is spatial organization, spatial recognition, and hippocampus takes part in that as well. Keep imagining that if hippocampus or neurogenesis is not happening, all of these functions will be disrupted and what will be the outcome? encoding of the memories. When we have a new memory, for example, let's say I have this thing and it just drops. So you're going to make a new memory right now. 
So I dropped something, right? So that would become a memory. And you might don't, you might not like it and say, there was a thud, there was a sound, I didn't like it. That processing of the event, then judging the event to say, I like it or I didn't like it. Limbic system is responsible for that. And within the limbic system, hippocampus has a very important role in encoding the memories. Then if I go back over here, we saw that 700 new neurons just in the hippocampus every day. And I showed you there are tons of other systems within the brain where the new neurons are being formed. If these new neurons in the hippocampus are not formed correctly or in the correct numbers, we end up with depression. That is one sign of neurogenesis problems. And then if there are neuropsychiatric problems, hippocampal damage is the first one to occur. Because of that, the first indication of a person's neurological issues is depression, which we so sometimes carelessly tells the, tell the person that don't be depressed, why are you this way, go figure it out, we are all also facing things, you are not the only one with depression. All of that is actually, could be a real problem if the person is getting into depression because of these issues. Now, hippocampus is very closely associated with hypothalamus as well. Hypothalamus is a, another structure above the brain stem whose job is to help regulate the hormonal systems and activities. When hippocampus does not work correctly, when there are neuronal rebirth or neuronal birth, neurogenesis is not occurring correctly in hippocampus, then hypothalamus cannot control hormonal activity very well and increased levels of cortisol is fa are found in the patients. Their suprarenal glands are not correctly controlled by hypothalamus if their hip hippocampus is not working correctly because of less number of new neurons produced. Can you imagine this? Somebody who has a higher level of cortisol. Nowadays, this is very common. I speak with doctors all the time. And they say, hey, I find increased cortisol level. Increased cortisol levels are going to be increased in stresses as well. It's not an indicator that this is always hippocampal damage. But hippocampal neurogenesis disruption in turn leads to increased cortisol as well. So do you see how we can get trapped in this vicious cycle? Let's say COVID caused us anxiety and stress, which cause stress hormones, including cortisol. Also that anxiety, stress, inflammation, and the disease caused hippocampal neurogenesis to be disrupted, which in turn causes more cortisol production and now we are stuck. So it's not just the neuronal system and the neuropsychiatric outcomes and the neurological outcomes remaining body has to pay a price as well for this. And when there is an abnormality of the hippocampal neurogenesis, then what kind of diseases are linked to this situation? Epilepsy, depression, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, strokes, Then the question becomes, so again, today's topic's outcome is to look at the lifestyles and habits and diets and supplements. But the point is, if we don't understand why, then that would just be Mubin sitting here preaching that we should have vitamin B12. Fine. Everybody says take vitamins. I want to make sure that we, the cool beans, stay on our uniqueness of understanding the mechanisms and then thinking about that. So my apologies if you feel that, hey, where is the, you can skip afterwards, but let's see, neuronal stem cells. Stem cell are the cells that make themselves, that can renew their own pool, and they can make new cells. 
bone marrow is filled with stem cells that make more blood cells and their own type as well. Brain also has stem cells. They are called neuronal stem cells. They are present in these structures that I listed out in the beginning and we are using hippocampus as an important actor for today. So there are neuronal stem cells present in the dentate gyrus. Dentate gyrus is where the hippocampus is embedded in. What we have to do is, we have to understand now that how do we actually trigger these neuronal stem cells and ask them to make more cells and what are the things that would disrupt that? So here is what happens. It's a beautiful mechanism. What happens is that there are two important chemical signals. One are glutamatergic signals or glutamate releasing neuronal signals. And the other one are GABAergic signals or GABA releasing neuronal signals. So in the hypothalamus, imagine hypothalamus is another structure somewhere over here where I'm pointing. In the hypothalamus, there is a nucleus called hypothalamic supramammillary mammillary nucleus because it is above the mammillary body. So a nucleus, a nucleus means collection of the neuronal cell bodies. So part of a hypothalamus hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is somewhere over here, part of the brain, deeper brain. This nucleus of hypothalamus, under the influence of glutamatergic signals, triggers the hippocampal cells, stem cells, to start proliferating. So let me actually go down here to the diagram, it would become easier. So imagine this is a stem cell sitting in the hippocampus. Under the glutamatergic signals, hypothalamic supramammillary nucleus, or let's call it SUM, S-U-M, that nucleus sent a message to this cell to say, hey man, make copies of yourself, make more neurons. So under this influence, the hippocampal neuronal stem cells would start proliferating. They would start increasing in number. You may have heard about proliferation in the immune cells all the time with me for last one and a half years, right? Increase in number is called proliferation. So now we have more baby future neurons. Right now they look like stem cells. Then hypothalamic supramammillary nucleus, the same nucleus that started this process of saying give birth to more babies, that also caused, weirdly today's Supreme Court uh, decision also looks like give birth to more babies. So back here, GABA, the supramammillary nucleus, releases GABAergic signals or have stimulates the neurons that would re release GABA and GABA helps to make these baby neuron cells into more towards becoming more committed neurons. That's the first change that appears. These cells now commit to become neurons instead of becoming the Stem cells. Remember, stem cells can make new stem cells or make other cells. So when a stem cell divides into multiple cells, those new cells have to make a decision for their life. Am I going to be a stem cell or am I going to become a neuron? So here, under the influence of GABAergic signals, these some of these stem cells would commit to become a neuron. Then, under further influence of the GABAergic uh, signals, these little baby committed neurons would start developing dendrites on them. Dendrites are the receiving filaments on a neuron. That is where they receive connections, incoming connections are received on dendrites. Outgoing orders from a neuron go out on an axon. So this, these little baby neurons start developing dendrites under GABAergic Gabergic influence. Am I discussing this? Because if we are in an inflammatory state or the things I, I would discuss later on, this whole delicate process of forming a new neuron can break down at any point. 
it may be that the new neuron is not formed or it was being formed and it got aborted on the way in a disabled state because the signals were not correctly present. So here the dendrites are now being formed. Once the dendrites are formed, the, the connection making hands are formed, then integration of this neuron occurs. That is this little baby neuron that has been born. Now it needs to integrate in this society of these neurons. It has to connect them correctly. It has to operate there correctly. It cannot just be born and just live by itself and say, I'm not connecting with the rest of the system. Then it is useless. This whole process can be disrupted by inflammatory state, inflammatory molecules, vascular problems, clotting problems, chemo, drugs, stress, lack of vitamin B12. Why? Because vitamin B12 is necessary for cell division. Lack of folic acid. Why? Because it is necessary to cell division to make DNAs. Lack of amino acids. Do, do you see how important it is, those simple things? Okay. So, how do we accomplish a lifestyle where that process continues to occur and occurs correctly? How do you make sure your hypothalamus is making good glutamatergic signals and giving good gabergic signals? You can't just start taking glutamate or GABA and say, all right, now the signals are there. It is the neurons that have to bring the signal to the right place and release that signal over there. So how do you do it? I'm going to share, unshare my screen and do something for you to give you an example. So look at the screen. And things changed. Right? Environment changed. You have never seen this environment before during my presentation. All of a sudden, this environment has become unique for you. It has become novel for you. You like it or you hate it, but there is something, there is a reaction because this is different. This is the first time ever Mobin has spoken with you with this background, this weird thing. I can even, so for example, John just said spooky. I could even pick up my little Hue app and go in there and change the colors. So let's say my background, I just made it more purplish or let's make it more greenish or more yellowish or more bluish, etc. or more whitish, correct? And I can do the same thing with the other light as well. It is more reddish and now greenish and yellowish. The point is I'm bothering you right now with this uniqueness, but I hope it's not causing stress. So the first thing to do, is enriching the environment with uniqueness. Now what happens is our environment may be very unique for someone else, but we may be looking at it daily and have become used to it, so it is not unique for us. So the in the studies, mice who were given an environment without the running wheel, without tunnels and stairs and things to run between, these mice had less new neuron formed compared to those that were given running wheels and that were given tunnels and things to explore. And you know that as we age, because of our other uh, phys phys physical issues and neurological issues, we start becoming slowly withdrawn. The more withdrawn we are, the more loss of unique environment we have. We become more and more confined to one room, one place. So the first thing they did was in these studies, the same mice that were not producing new neurons, they gave them just a running wheel, just that wheel. And the neuron production went up many times just for the availability of that wheel on which the mouse was running. So the first thing to do, and I request you to do it, try it, and that is enrich your environment. Have a candle, go out, take a detour. Uh, I So since I've been researching this, 
I found out that there are so many streets and roads near me on which I have never turned after being here for years and years. So I have started taking those accidental turns just to see something new, to allow my brain to process something new for which it says, you know what, I'm going to make some new neurons. So enriched environment, novel environment, take a detour, travel, look at some beautiful or messy but unique thing. Expose yourself to new fragrance. Get a candle and have, you know, those fragrant candles. A new taste, a new texture of the food. I'll discuss a little later why food texture matters. Art, art, art. Art activates your brain in so many ways. Now, before we continue again to the exercises and to the supplements and foods, I want you to address this controversy because somebody is going to walk up to you and say, well, you talk about neurogenesis. So here are some studies. This is a study May 2022. May 2022. This year, May. Right? We are in June, so last month. This study says, robust adult neurogenesis in the primate hippocampus. So the study's basic concept is this, that, hey, we have seen, and let me share my screen. In this study, they say that we have seen the studies that show neurogenesis in rodents. We believe it doesn't, or people believe it doesn't happen in humans. So they said what we did was, we went to the closest cousin of the humans, the primates, and observed neurogenesis in them. And they said we found overall, our data set demonstrated robust neurogenesis in the adult macaque hippocampus, revealing the presence of all key neurogenic precursor cell populations, stem cells. Our analysis also identified substantial differences in neurogenic processes between rodents and non-human primates, such as different marker gene expression patterns and blah. What they're saying is, if you are observing a mouse and you are used to seeing a specific marker in the mouse to say this proves that there is neurogenesis, then you turn around and you want to see the same marker in a human to say, Human is not showing that marker, so must be no neurogenesis. They said humans' markers of neurogenesis are different, not human primates. So this is one study. And they said we saw lots of neurogenesis in macaques. We believe that based on that, we can say there is lots of neurogenesis in humans as well. Then here is another study. This study is the opposite of the previous one. This study says we have, and this is January of this year, so lots of progress in this area, actually. Lots of acceleration in science in this area. Single nucleus sequencing finds no adult hippocampal neurogenesis in humans. So in January, there is this. In an older study, this is, I believe, 1998, in which they said using immunofluorescent labeling, for BRDU and for one of the neuronal markers, new and N and calib so various markers here. We demonstrate that new neurons, as defined by these markers, are generated from dividing progenitor cells, progenitor means parent cells, in the dentate gyrus of human where the hippocampus is present in adult humans. Our results further indicate that human hippocampus retains its ability to generate neurons throughout life. Could we be have been talking about a lesser important topic? I don't think so. Now, stress. In all of these studies, and the links are in the description. So I've done all that homework. Stress negatively impacts neurogenesis. Now, hear this out. And I would actually request you for your comment about this. Adolescents youngsters, teenagers, we know for sure neurogenesis is occurring in them. Most of our cells division stop occurring after 18 in boys and later in girls. So 
imagine 18 years of age. By that time, there are cell divisions happening, including neurogenesis. Now imagine an adolescent exposed to inflammatory state that reduces neurogenesis, injuries, vaccine injuries, COVID long COVID type injuries. The problem with the newer neuron formation in them would cause depression and that can then stay forever because they would never catch up to make those neurons that they were supposed to make and they did not get to make during this early critical time. So this is very important. And my time with my children is gone. They are both uh, older, 24 and 29, 25 and 29. But those who are in the teenager stage, the happier they are, the better their brains will function for the rest of the life because they will be able to do better neurogenesis. So brain volume, correct amount, production during the early times is very important. And it kept making me think, what would happen if they get COVID? What would happen if there is vaccine injury? So we just, and what happens with this long stress two and a half years of lockdowns and stresses. How much impact on the brain tissue has occurred on these youngsters? Okay, continuing. So now wrapping up, what are the things to do? As we saw one, novel unique environments. Then on this side are the things to do and on this side are the things to avoid. Here will give birth to new neurons. Here the new neurons will not be born and the older would continue to die. So what are the things? First, running, running, running. Running doubles, triples the production of neuro, new neurons. Just simple thing of running. And if, for example, you are in an age where you cannot run like another athlete, then you don't have to just walk fast meaning your body has to have that struggle done that a runner does, even if that is by walking fast. So running is very important. Novel environment, you can turn off lights and you can turn on lights. So you can put a candle somewhere. You can do little art somewhere. You can just walk fast. You can just get out of your home and look at some new direction. You can look at clouds. Reading. Why reading? Not because reading itself causes the neurogenesis, but reading creates images and creates events in your mind that need to be memorized. Brain would like to, if there is some fun reading, brain would like to hold on to that. And as soon as brain would want to hold on to that, it is going to increase neurogenesis so that more neurons are formed, so that they can hold these memories and work with these newer experiences. Sleep. They saw that those rodents who would not sleep properly, who were sleep deprived, they had lesser neurogenesis. And restoring their sleep improved neurogenesis. Sex. I already talked about it. Learning. Learning would also force you to activate your brain in a positive way. So as soon as your brain goes, aha, and it is pleasant, your neurogenesis is triggered. How easy. Check this out. I'm so proud that I had started this discussion of the chronic inflammation and the things around that. That course alone should be a thousand dollars course. Check this out, intermittent fasting. We just talked about it. Intermittent fasting. Remember with the intermittent fasting, we talked about autophagy, we talked about recycling of the older cells to allow the newer cells to be developed. This happens in the brain as well. Caloric restriction. According to Dr. Um, what was her name? I always forget her name. She's just so marvelous. One second. Let me 
bring her up. Oh, actually, I had closed those. Um, Dr. I forgot her name, but I have the link in there. She said that if you have 20 to 30 percent caloric restriction, that's not a lot of restriction, 20, 30 percent. It triggers neurogenesis. Just being hungry triggers neurogenesis. This is why people who are hungry are kind of a little more sharp. Anyways, blue, that, that is a different reason, though. Hungry person fighting more is because the hunger center, anger center, thirst center, and sex center are all made very are present very close to each other in our hypothalamus and thalamic areas. So any one of them when becomes imbalanced, it causes others to be imbalanced as well. So it's not neurogenesis. Anyways, caloric restriction, blueberries, blueberries trigger massively the neurogenesis. So if today you just take away a few things, novel environments, running, walking fast, looking at newer things, blueberries, flavonoids like dark chocolates. Many of these things are also in nuts and seeds and stuff as well. Curcumin. Now, curcumin, Dr. Paul Merrick's credit, he called me a few days ago and he said, remember curcumin by itself, the tablets and capsules, they are not absorbable. They are a waste. They will be absorbed better with milk, which has fats, or when we have cooked them in our oils. So curcumin with milk. Caffeine. S. Viratrol, which is in red wine and it is in many nuts as well. Omega-3 fatty acids, which is in fatty fish and again many nuts and seeds as well. Folic acid and vitamin B12 especially because they are necessary to make new DNAs. In their absence, we get megaloblastic anemia. We start developing uh, posterior column of the spinal cord, starts having problems. And so folic acid and vitamin B12 deficiency is very dangerous. And as soon as you correct them, you have neurogenesis as well. Zinc, another enzyme necessary for cell divisions. Uh, I'm calling it enzyme, uh, metal. Vitamin A. High sulfur diets because they have glutathione in them, which in turn helps with the chemical substances we're talking about, gabergic and glutamatergic. Crunchy food. So this is again doctor uh, whose name I forgot. She, she, she's going to kick me for this. Um, crunchy food. She, she said, we have found out that crunchy foods actually initiate more neurogenesis. And the reason is very simple. A food with texture allows you to create new memories, to feel the food, to crunch it. The texture is felt on the on the tongue and the cheeks and the mouth area, the whole thing, the pharynx. Breaking of the crunchy food, the sound. Then sometimes when we break things, the, the fragrance is released on them. All of that creates enough of events for the brain to do neurogenesis. On the other hand, if somebody is taking soft foods, that does not trigger neurogenesis. So crunchy, crackly food, chewing gums, fragrant food, things with the surprises in them, any events that would improve blood supply to the brain. On the other hand, if you wanted to see what are the things that would reduce neurogenesis, of course, a top is stress. Aging process causes reduced rate of neurogenesis, but you could kind of counter that. If not stop it, you can counter that by the other side. Inflammatory state of the body, inflammatory molecules can cause vascular inflammation, can cause clotting, can cause disruption of the neurogenesis chemotherapy, high saturated fats, high sugars, but not fructose. I was reading one of the studies that said fructose somehow does not disrupt the neurogenesis, but other high sugar uh, things cause disruption of neurogenesis. Reduce vitamin B12, A, folic acid, alcohol, 
and then soft tights. So that is the discussion for today. I took a lot of your time, but I feel that this list and the pathology and the mechanisms, they are not present anywhere on the internet in one place. And so I think this may just be your 45 minutes, but it may be a lifelong uh, help in trying to keep our brains sharp. I need it too. It's not that I am devoid of it. I'm 53 years as well. I need to figure these things out too. So thank you very much for doing studying this with me. Um, please like, subscribe, and share. There are links in the description. If you would like to support this work, you can buy me a coffee or you can use PayPal. You can become a member of doc this Dr. Bean YouTube channel or Substack, or you can also become a patron. So thank you very much. Today we would just do this talk and we would meet each other on Monday. Have a great weekend. Please review this last five, 10 minutes of this talk. See the things that you can do. Please, my request, make a change that you can tell me I made this one change. Thank you very much. And I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.